here and welcome to another episode of Time Attack Rivals where we bring you some of the coolest cars and uh, most awesome builds in the grid life and a GTA paddock for Time Attack. Well, behind us this weekend we got James and a very very fast actually BMW F82 M4. So James, welcome to the show. Thanks man. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for being on the show. We're a big fan of you guys and Beamer World and all that you do. We've competed against each other in a couple of occasions and we've seen this car get slowly faster and faster and faster and you guys came out and let's just say it blew a lot of people's expectations out of the water and immediately are competitive in top of grid, uh, grid light street mod and that's a really competitive class. Tell us about the car. All right. So this is the Vimmerworld GT Moore. We started this car as a road car. Bone stock road car, had carbon ceramic brakes, and we've been racing these M4 GT4s for uh, five years, six years now. And the idea behind the car is we, you know, we've, we've been working with BMW, we get to work with BMW engineers, and obviously we know what they would build as a race car, but what would we build with our partners if we were building you know kind of a, a similar car at least uh, on a similar platform but without limitations so gt4 you're in a fairly tight box uh, uh, on a number of things but certainly power is one of the big things but you know in time attack pretty wide anything open goes. anything goes we got you know we got some some different things going on with this car specifically for grid life this weekend but yeah what we wanted to build a car wide open big power big arrow and and really the car that we would build with all that technology integrated. Makes total sense. If anything, this seem this seems things seems kind of like, if anything, like our super nice super TA90 almost. Where it's kinda of like mostly bolt on, a little bit of fabrication here and there and beyond GT4, GT4, which is kind of why you guys call it the GT more, right? Exactly. And for us as Bimmer World, we didn't we didn't want to fabricate something crazy. We didn't want to go super far out of the box because what we're doing, and since you've seen the progression of the car, you know, we kind of knew where what we wanted to build, but we wanted to build it in stages so that our customers would have stages. And we wanted to build something that wasn't crazy so that somebody could bolt on, could duplicate what we've done. Sounds like exactly what we've done but okay <laughs> <laughs> anyways <laughs> no very good concept obviously you know the concept is proven and everything so tell us about the car like all right engine wise what is done to the engine? So we did run a stock motor for a while, but we changed that out. Uh, we, uh, we, we built one forged rods, forged pistons, because we wanted the motor to be able to support a thousand horsepower if we decided to run theirs. I mean, these, these motors are awesome as is, but they're, they, they have a limit. So we wanted to not have a limit of the motor. So forged rods, forged pistons, everything else stock inside the motor. Outside the motor, and, and of course important for the motor, uh, we've run a variety of turbos, we, we took this car to one lap of America, and while we have pure stage two plus on it right now, not the right turbo for one lap. Just uh, we, we're, we're not able to find the fuel we need to really run these things. We're not, you know, we're not able to to run the power. So then you get all the lag and none of the yeah, power. Yeah, it was a little laggy through the autocross sections. Oh uh, yeah, and and so many of the tracks on one lap are just small, tight tracks. So it, right. you know, it wasn't great there. But we've also run some some different pures as well as a Mitsubishi project that we're working on with them. So we're you know we. We have a range of turbo options. Cooling is a big thing when you're making power on this. And you know, we're seeing that this weekend, you know, it's 90 plus degrees. The asphalt is black as it can possibly be because it's fresh. And so track temps are high. We've worked with CNR to develop a package uh, for the car. So CNR, now PWR, or uh, they're, they're, it's kind of PWR now owned by CNR, vice versa. CNR now owned same, by PWR. Same company. Same company, same company. So we've been working with CNR up at Indy forever on uh, a variety of cars. So they developed this top mount intercooler for us that's super, super trick, has super nice cores in it, which only CNR seems to be able to make. They, they just really are at the high end of core manufacturing. And then of course, that results in a super high end premium product that makes a tremendous difference to those inlet air temps. But then complemented by a full suite of, of CNR, PWR components on the front of the car to make everything work. Very cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about aero because we're we are very very big aero nerds here yep. at PhD. Uh, one thing I did notice earlier, while well, you know you have mechanics and guys working around it, earlier when the car was up in the air, it kind of looked like you guys don't really have a necessary front splitter, but it was more like a 3D shaped actual like a front wing setup. Correct. 
Yeah, this was developed uh, specifically for this car. And again, we used the mounting points of the GT4 or the mounting oh. strategy of that, right. So, you know, the, the front bumper is a shell. I'm not a big believer in mounting your splitter to the front bumper. Nobody is. So, so right, you it find out real quick, right? Yeah, it don't work. But this, I mean, this thing is just super robust. I'm like 220, 230, and there's no stay rods. There's none needed because this is a cord carbon component and it's it's got all the stays underneath and it's just super super strong because the splitter needs to be able to ride close to the ground but not flex to the ground at speed I mean we were hitting 180 miles an hour here and that would just on a on a splitter that's thin or a luma light or something it's just gonna suck it right down we talked about the front now let's talk a little bit about the rear this this rear wing looks pretty serious. Tell us about it. Is this chassis mounted and everything or is it still trunk mounted? This is actually trunk mounted but it is super super strong. Uh, this is the grid life setup because we have the, the street mod rules. Uh, we do typically put this wing higher up oh. and further back with different different swan neck mounts but we're using the same mounting strategy as the GT4. The trunk hinges are it's, it's a box piece of right. steel right. and so it's it's nicely integrated and the the mounting is super strong and you can open the trunk. You don't have to take the trunk off to then get to the wing. So I like I like this setup for this type of car. Tell us like mostly one thing I'm really interested about, right? The F series chassis that we've driven on um, uh, like just between us and our customers and all that, they all feel a little bit understeery on the way in and a little bit oversteery on the way out on power. How does this drive? How do you how do you guys get around that inherent chassis kind of kind of feel, you know? It depends on how you know, if you if you drive the car into the corner too fast, of course it's gonna understeer. With power that we're putting down, this this is tuned up for about 750 for this weekend. The, with that kind of power, you you can have power down problems, but oddly, we don't have power down problems. And even with a 200 tread wear tire, I can roll into the power pretty aggressively and it just works. So another concept that we used from BMW from the GT4 world is we have 18 by 11 wheels all the way around. So even though we're restricted to a 285 tire this weekend, we can still put that tire on an 18 by 11 wheel, give it more footprint on the ground. Of course, that means more grip and yeah, you know, it's, it's still understeers just a little bit, but we can dial that out. We just lowered the front earlier earlier this weekend, get that splitter closer to the ground, and that seems to have significantly improved the front understeer. So, I, you know, it's a well-balanced car. To me, I want a car with just a little bit of understeer uh, because then it, then I can control it over a long duration. For sure, for sure. We're kind of the opposite way then. I'm, I just... I've I, seen your videos. Thank you. I know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> can we talk a little bit about suspension? Is yeah. it... Oh, we got the wheels off here. So it might be the perfect time. Right, so so suspension as part of that uh, M4 strategy, we, we went away from the BMW pin mount strut. When I say pin mount, it's a pin at the top with a top adjuster that you can see when you open the hood but you're limited by your strut tower with that pin mount. So we have changed it to a clevis under the strut tower. So now we can move the whole top of the, the strut further inboard. So then combined with SPL arms, and we have we have a custom SPL GT more package on the arms on the front, we, we move the top in, we move the bottom in, and that's what allows us to get that big 18 inch wheel with up to a 315, three, uh, 315 road car tire, 305 slick tire under the car. So very interesting. Yeah, it's you know, and and camber adjusted very precisely with pills. So it's no more loosen the bolt, slide it. We, you know, we have the pill inserts again, kind of kind of like the GT4. We had to make different plates because we wanted to work in a different camber range than the GT4 does because those those things use a ton of camber, not appropriate for a lot of the tire Street choices. Yeah. Right, but they're yeah. interchangeable. So this weekend, given that we did want more camber, uh, we're actually using a, a couple of GT4 parts in addition to our standard camber plate so very um, cool rear same thing spl arms uh the way we do the setup is pretty critical to that power down that we talked about oh. earlier um uh, because you can work with toe steer and get the right right curves. yeah you guys mess with the camera uh, like the to like the toe curves and all that exactly yeah let's talk a little bit about braking because we know as you said the car is 800 something horsepower yep. going like 180 down the front straight it's got to slow down yep. it's got to stop yeah. how are you stopping so 
We've got Alcon brakes on the car, uh, designed, developed for this car. It's, it's a nice caliper package, 380 mil, I think all the way around. Phil Wurz is a genius. Let, you know, let me give a shout out to Phil Wurz. That guy is the guy behind this car and knows all the specs. He tells them to me so I can, I can regurgitate them to the best of my ability, but he's really the guy that designed this car. So, uh, but we worked with Alcon to put together the brake package. Uh, important for us to be able to come up with a package that fits under an 18 inch wheel yep. uh, because that's you know it's important for customers nobody wants to run a 19 so uh, but it, you know four corners four corner Alcons and then everything else stock we're using a stock booster and you know it's a little touchy PFC pads uh, they do a great job I find that in a modern car and with modern ABS it becomes less about what I want as a driver and more about what the ABS in the yes. car wants yes so. someone who gets what I have to feel in like the super like seriously yeah. you, you don't feel much like if you try to attack this like like you do in a real race car it just won't happen. no doesn't like that i hate being attacked and it's very difficult with a boosted pedal setup because attacked you know when i'm used to driving a manual pedal then i just go to the pedal yes I, you know, I you have can't. to roll to the pedal, yeah. and then I have to select pads front and rear that, you know, not only at the beginning of the braking zone, but as they heat up at the different rates, work for the balance of the car with the ABS and what the ABS is supposed to do. So it's all, it's like, uh, it's it's like uh, the ABS is your instrument and you're using your brake pads to play the instrument. It kind of feels like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes total sense. Interior, we've got some very fun stuff in here. Uh, what looks like a KMP steering wheel and some very fancy buckets in a cage. Talk us a little bit about that. So inside, yeah, the KMP wheel, just because I, I prefer something aftermarket versus versus something, you know, pure stock. It has a quick release. I don't personally use it, but the KMP is awesome because it has the, the clicky paddles. It has buttons that are clicky like a race car. I like that. Safety wise, we've, we've gotten rid of the back seats. We've added a roll bar, OMP seats. Lifeline harnesses, and what you don't see in the trunk of the car, we do have a full Lifeline fire system, which has plumbed both cockpit and engine oh, bay. Really? Yeah. yeah, to me, that's pretty important as well. Instrumentation, we do have a, an AIM Solo up high. We also put a Motec on this car because this is a development mule for us. We're doing a lot of work. We need a higher level of data on the car, so we, we have CAN templates for the GT4 cars, and we've added things to those CAN templates, so we have an abundance of data wow. to figure out what our changes are doing. Like, like I said earlier, that progressive change where you, you you have to test a b what's better now we know and it's more than sometimes more than just lap time more than just like a feel thing ah it feels better and it's a, and it's a lot more than this is the brand i sell so this is the good thing you know we we do a lot of work with our partners we've developed parts for this car using our partners but then then we test everything and you know if it if it doesn't carry its weight then why why it is the customer be yeah, yeah it has to be proven yeah why why should a customer pay for a part just because it's a part that, that doesn't it, really work no nah, that's not how we do 100%. this 100%. yeah i mean we were genuinely impressed because a couple weeks ago when you guys said you were coming to do this uh we i remember i was sneaking in the grid life street mod chat and people were like ah oh, you know they, they're not going to be that competitive you know they're not going to be that fast like oh people think it's so easy to come into street mod and just go fast like that and guess what you guys are beating records from like two three years ago already it's right on pace trying to chase down the leaders who is like barely half a second away ryan matthew who's just one of the fastest in street mod at the moment yeah uh car is really on point you're obviously a fantastic driver behind the wheel and we're super excited to see you try and go for that win for us BMW boys. Yeah, you know? right. We haven't we haven't turned the lap we want to yet. We had a little bit of a problem yesterday with the tire D lamb. We've got one nagging issue, but hopefully in this next session it's close, we'll huh? go fast. It's close, huh? Yes. Like, we're super keen to see it. And you know, props to you guys. Of course, the guys, Phil, and everybody who's still working on the car and the behind the scenes is still working away. Uh, I will say, I woke up at 3 a.m. just to go pee. Like front of the car was like fully apart. No one was here. I'm expecting that while well, they're not gonna be able to make for like 8 a.m. session, we woke up at 7. The car's fully dressed, ready to go. <laughs> I was like, I just went back, took like a small nap. What happened? Like you, everything was back together. It was yeah. crazy. So yeah. great job to you guys. Fantastic effort this weekend. And, Thank uh, you. Hope we can see you on the top side of the podium. One more thing yeah. before we go. I want to mention it's not car parts, but our partners racing into Alzheimer's. So this is a charity we've worked with since 2018. All the names on the car are people's families, donor, donor families that have been affected by Alzheimer's. 
and they have chosen to honor their their loved ones with a donation 100 percent of that money goes to charity we match it there's several other corporate matches i think since we've been involved with them we've raised over a half million bucks for specifically for the cure so you know that's that's an important thing to me and you know super super proud to have them on the car as well it's not always just about the go fast parts it's about what else you can do in the paddock like let us know the link because my grandma personally speaking my grandma's suffering a little bit from that i want to contribute to the cause as well so awesome. let us know we'll, thank you, you so know, much make that happen as well so awesome. thank you for showing us the wonderful and lovely little very colorful as well uh m4 from uh, bima world very fast as well so thank you very much james appreciate it